Let's get a view from Labour now. We can talk to the party's Shadow Business Secretary, Jonathan Reynolds, uh, who joins us now. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, uh, Mr Reynolds. Um, I'm keen to get a bit of your uh, morning, reaction to... Morning. Good morning. I'm keen to get a bit of reaction from you to our interview with Tony Blair. I'm not sure if you got to see it, but he said that right now the NHS is not providing a good standard of care and things need to be done completely differently, including, in his words, complete cooperation between the public and private sector. Do you agree with him? Well, it depends what that means in detail. So I think there is... I saw the bit where Tony was talking about the the changes in terms of what innovation will mean, what the kind of technological improvements will mean, how people will manage their health care differently. I mean, there have, of course, always been a strong collaboration between public and private in the NHS. I mean, GPs and pharmacists aren't directly salaried employees of the NHS. So it depends what people mean by the detail of that. But I agree with the point that things have to change. We have to take advantage of these incredible innovations. I think we should think of you know, the data the NHS has for all of us as a, as a population as a, as a resource that is as valuable as, for instance, the North Sea once was to us. We've got huge potential here, competitive advantages here that other countries don't have. So I'm very much for that case for innovation, but of course that for me does mean at the heart of public NHS still delivered free at the point of use. I don't think Tony would disagree with that in any way. So yes, let's embrace that innovation, but explain to the public in specific terms what that will mean for them. I guess the wider point that he was making is what does a Labour government do if there's not much money left or no money left, if debt is high uh, as it will be uh, after the next election? Um, Keir Starmer is talking a lot about fiscal discipline today as well. But if you do stick to the spending plans that are currently projected by the OBR after the next election, if you were to win, I mean, that would mean austerity, wouldn't it? Don't you think you need to get level with people about what that but, means? No, I think Keir is put the case the country is in and levelled with the British people in, in fairly frank and admirable terms. But let me just take you through each, each bit of that question, Sophie. So first of all, I don't think the Conservative Party will stick to Conservative spending limits after the election if they had the chance to do so, because I don't think those are credible party. Can documents Can we just talk about what moment. Labour would do, please? Absolutely. But let me just say, change is not... People who try and posit that the choice being between spending a lot of money and getting that transformational change, you only get one, that transformation with that discipline. And if you look at the detail of Labour's plans, it's not just about where we do need to spend more money and where we said there'll be switch spends to do that. It's about things like reform of the planning system, which could unlock a huge amount of private investment. It's about reform of business rates. It's about how national grid operates so that businesses themselves can do the changes that they wish to make. About how we will change the apprenticeship level to give businesses more flexibility over the skills training they need for their employees. How we'll devolve some of that skills budget to local areas as part of our devolution plans. It's not just about spending money. Of course there are areas where we accept, for instance, we've said we'd end the non-DOM rule and put the money into the NHS or we would tax private equity differently or, or put VAT on the fees of private schools. We have identified where additional resource will come from, but it's important people understand that change and reform is as much about our plans as that investment. And I would just say to anybody who disagrees with that, that belief in discipline that we've got on the Labour side, just look at the disaster of the Liz Truss government. It's not just about the government having higher borrowing costs, which is a problem. It's about people paying mortgages, paying more than they otherwise would have done because that government had no discipline and no serious plan. So I will stick very resolutely to our message of change, investment, but discipline is part of that. Yeah, but you need to be honest about what that discipline means. Because, yeah, sure, it means all the things that you're talking about when it comes to reform and changes to the planning law and so on. I'm not saying that isn't going to happen or wouldn't happen under a Labour government. And I'm also, uh, you know, you, you are talking about increasing taxes by a couple of billion here and a couple of billion there. But let's get real. It also means really, really tight spending, along with those other two things that you make. And that, for many people, is going to look like austerity. We do not believe in austerity, and many of us witnessed firsthand the, the consequences of that in our constituencies. But we have always been absolutely clear. I mean, we've got to level with people, and we have done. If we don't improve the economic growth of this country, if we have the kind of stagnation and the low productivity and the wage stagnation that has really been the defining feature of the last 13 years, it does put incredible constraints on what you can promise and what you can change in terms of public services. So that's why our approach has always been to say... For instance, if you look at the, the combination of that programme, reform and public investment through things like our Green Prosperity Plan, that has always been about how do you leverage in a greater amount 
of private investment? How do you then see the improvements that will come to productivity and to growth as part of that? And if you just look specifically, I mean, I heard a little bit of the interview there with the, the current business sector. I mean, I would just say to her, where are the, the battery factories we need in this country to keep the automotive sector here? Where's the plan for green steel? In every country around the world, you're seeing these big collaborations between the state, the government and the private sector. And we haven't got the same level of ambition here in the UK right now. And that is why we're not seeing the kind of investment that we need to see. Um, this week, the government accepted the pay review body recommendations, uh, which means that for many unions, they've decided to call off strikes, such as in schools. Junior doctors are holding out, though. Uh, what's your view? Are they right to hold out for more money, or is it time for them to call it a day? Well, look, the, the situation in any bit of the public sector is going to have to be a decision for the unions and the workforce in that area. And the issues are different in each sector. We've always tried to get across that we understand specifically for the NHS, of course, pay is an issue, but workload and burnout and retention are also massive issues as well. And I think a lot of people want to see the government acknowledge and recognise that. I do think if they followed our plan to, for instance, raise that revenue, it's not insignificant, three and a half billion pounds, and put that into the NHS in terms of workload. That is the kind of serious proposal that the workforce will want to see. So those individual workers will have to make that decision. But I think the government's got to recognise, I think it has recognised, to be frank, its early approach was completely wrong. And actually, you know, the lack of respect they've shown for a lot of the public sector, I think, has been one of the aggregating factors in the industrial action that we've seen. OK, uh, thank you very much indeed. Great to have you on the programme. Jonathan Reynolds there, speaking to